So my name is uh, Evan Roux, and I'm a free and open source uh, software developer, mostly focused on uh, the GDAL map server uh, project and QGIS projects. Um, in this talk, I go over the changes uh, GDAL has received uh, during the past year with a uh, new 3.8 and 3.9 releases. And I will also talk about the future directions. So uh, for those who don't know a lot about GDAL, in just one slide, um, GDAL stands for the uh, um, Geospatial Data Abstraction Library, uh, which is a, uh, sometimes a black box you use without even realizing it uh, uh, when you use uh, C, most C or C++ uh, open source or closed source uh, GIS software. Um, as of today, it handles more than 250 different file formats or uh, network or database or services protocols. It, uh, is it is released under the MIT uh, license, which is a, a very permissive uh, software license. And uh, we release a, a, a version with uh, new features uh, um, about every six months and uh, bug fix releases uh, every, every two months. So uh, let's uh, now dive into uh, the novelties of uh, the new GDAL versions. Um, First, um, there, there is an ongoing uh, development uh, at OGC with uh, uh, OGC features and geometry JSON uh, file format specification. Uh, it's often uh, shortened as JSON FG. Um, and it's uh, an extension of uh, the well known uh, GeoJSON format. Um, it, um, is compatible with uh, other uh, OGC uh, ongoing developments and uh, particularly with uh, OGC API uh, features. So uh, let's, uh, let's look uh, on a very simple, uh, simple or simplified example uh, at the new features of uh, JSON FG. Um, one of them is the uh, ability to handle uh, coordinate reference systems which are not uh, WGS84. So we are, you have this chord ref sys uh, element uh, that you can attach to a feature collection or feature. Uh, for now, it's uh, limited to uh, what I would say well-known CRS, that is, uh, for example, uh, EPSG codes. Uh, another main uh, change is addition of a place element, which is an alternate uh, place where you can put uh, geometry. So if you use a non-WGS84 CRS, you will put your geometry in there, but you can also put uh, geometries that you cannot encode at all in uh, GeoJSON, such as uh, uh, 3D geometries like polyhedron or prism, and uh, there will probably uh, be uh, enhancements also to uh, support uh, uh, curved geometries in this place element. Uh, GSON-FG also bring uh, a way to standardize how to express timestamps or time ranges. Um, and you can also declare the feature type uh, of an element and you can have within a feature collection different feature types. So in uh, GDAL 3.a we have added uh, a dedicated uh, driver uh, to handle uh, this new format. It shares a lot of things with uh, GeoJSON but it's also separated for clarity. And uh, writing uh, the driver uh, will automatically put uh, geometries into the place element uh, if they are expressed in a non WGS84 CRS. And it will also write the corresponding geometry when it's possible in, uh, in the geometry element. Uh, multiple layers can be read or written uh, with uh, this uh, feature type special attribute. There's a mapping uh, between the time element and OGR properties. And uh, on the read side, we have a minimum support for uh, some of the 3D uh, geometries. Uh, yeah. So here's just uh, an example on the small file I showed uh, just before. So you can see that uh, the layer, layer name is uh, retrieved for the feature type element. Uh, we can uh, detect uh, the non-WGS84 uh, CRS. The geometry is taken from the place element and uh, the time uh, property is uh, properly recognized uh, as such. Um, uh, 
so in uh, GDAS 3.8, a we also added a driver for the PM tiles uh, uh, format uh, specification. So PM tiles is a cloud-friendly container uh, that enables to serve tiles uh, efficiently with uh, only object storage functionality. So it's the equivalent of cloud-optimized GOT for flat geoburf, but for tiled uh, data sets. Um, it is really quite close to the uh, Mapbox tiles, MB tiles format, uh, which used the uh, SQLite 3 uh, layout, but here it's uh, really uh, optimized and uh, dedicated structure to uh, efficiently uh, navigate through tiles uh, and with a uh, an index that has been cleverly designed and uh, in particular to handle the uh, tiles that are of the same content. And I've put a link uh, on a presentation that uh, Brandon Liu gave uh, last year uh, at Phosphorg Prison about uh, portal maps and uh, he has a talk uh, later this uh, morning too. Um, so the driver, the OGR driver uh, supports uh, reading and writing uh, vector tiles in a Mapbox vector tiles format and it shares a lot with the existing uh, MB tiles and MPT drivers, so you have uh, exactly the same set of uh, creation options. Um, of course, if you really need, you know, well customized options, you're probably better using uh, TPCANU uh, to, to create uh, your PM tiles uh, data sets. We have a VSI PM tiles virtual file systems. Uh, which enables you to directly access uh, low-level parts of uh, PM tiles data sets to extract, for example, the metadata document or extract a given uh, MVT tiles uh, directly from uh, the PM tiles files. Um, we have uh, new drivers to uh, handle a different uh, product specification of uh, bathymetric related uh, raster data sets. So those are the S100, 2, 104, and 111 uh, EHO standards. So they are all based on uh, an abstract specification and uh, they are based on a HDF file uh, container. Uh, they are read-only drivers currently. So the S102 driver is uh, to read the uh, bathymetric surface products uh, which give death and uh, certainty. It's similar to uh, the existing uh, bag driver. The S104 driver is uh, for surface navigation products. Uh, so those are water level, eight, and trends. And you can have several timestamps uh, in such a uh, file. So they are, each timestamp will be exposed as a separate GDAL subdata set. And the S101.11 uh, driver is for surface current products, that is, you have a band with a speed and another one with a, a current direction, and the same at uh, multiple timestamps. We have a new uh, command line utility, uh, which is called GDAL footprint, and uh, it is to uh, compute the polygonal envelope of a, of a raster, so it's really based on the existing GDAL polygonize uh, utility, but uh, with uh, new options to uh, really uh, address the use case of uh, computing uh, footprints of rasters. So it takes into account no data or alpha band. Uh, you can decide how you deal uh, with the validity if you have a multiple band data set, if uh, the validity of a pixel is as soon as one band is valid or if all bands must be valid. You can decide to compute uh, the footprint uh, only on an uh, overview uh, instead of the full resolution data set. So if you want coarser uh, footprints but uh, compute it faster, you, you can work with overviews. And you have different options to reproject uh, to a common CRS or to densify or simplify the footprints. Uh, you can split multi-polygons into separate polygons, and uh, you can also remove uh, areas that are smaller than a, a given value. Uh, and it's uh, accessible uh, as a C method, and uh, you can use it uh, from uh, Python. Um, anyone here familiar with the VRT, the virtual raster format of GDAL? Anyone has tried to create virtual mosaics with hundreds uh, of thousands of files? And anyone has 
needed to create VRTs or VRTs to overcome uh, such use case. So as a new GTI uh, driver, which stands for GDI Raster Tile Index, is uh, something that will uh, really help you if you have really large collection of tiles for which you want to create a virtual mosaic. Um, so it's based, basically it uses uh, OGR uh, vector driver as a backend uh, to, uh, to store um, the file name and uh, the, the footprint of, uh, um, of the tile. And typically you want to use that with efficient drivers such as uh, GeoPackage, FlatGeoBuff, or PostGIS. And uh, besides uh, being able to handle arbitrarily large collection of tiles, it has also small, uh, or not so small, but enhancements over VRT. So typically you can uh, benefit from the special indices uh, of the backend uh, you use. Uh, so you can immediately retrieve a, a tile in a really just a second or you know, just a few tenths of, of milliseconds, hopefully. You can have control on the uh, Z order if you have overlapping tiles. And it has uh, support for on-the-fly reprojection if you have a collections of uh, tiles in uh, different uh, projections. And it also supports correctly uh, the alpha band uh, when you have overlapping tiles. It will really take into account the alpha band to uh, composite uh, the final uh, result of the mosaic. Uh, so you can create a GTI index using the existing uh, GDALT index uh, utility, uh, which has been enhanced with a, a number of new options to handle that new case. Or you can Sometimes, uh, for example, you would have your catalog of tiles in some database, and you can, uh, of course, use the OGR API to programmatically create a, a GTI uh, data set. So basically, a GTI tile index requires a vector tile layer with, a, no, sorry, a vector layer with a, a column with a data set location, and it's a polygonal footprint as a geometry and a few metadata items which helps the drivers to quickly uh, instantiate uh, the virtual mosaic. So typically you will have the resolution, the extent, the CRS, uh, data type, and the number of bands. Uh, the metadata can be embedded uh, in uh, the uh, uh, vector formats that support uh, that. So currently we have GeoPackage, of course, and the flat GeoBuff and PostGIS drivers have been enhanced to be able to store and retrieve a layer metadata. Or you can provide that metadata in a small uh, XML file. And here I've put uh, an example of such, uh, such uh, a file. It, it's really small. It, uh, it points to the vector uh, data set where your tiles uh, are referenced. And it contains a layer name uh, if it's a multi-layer uh, data set the field name where you have the f uh, location uh, of each tile, and for example, the, the resolution of uh, the virtual mosaics. Um, I'm just going to quickly recap uh, past development. So in GDAL 3.6, we introduce a, a new API for a vector data set, which is based on the Euro uh, columnar uh, Orient, um, oriented way of uh, presenting uh, data. So basically, data uh, for a given field is packed together in memory, uh, which helps to, uh, it to, to be a more uh, CPU-friendly and storage-friendly also, because it, it increases uh, uh, the efficiency of uh, compression algorithm. Uh, so in uh, GDAL 3.8, we uh, we went on uh, improving that by uh, uh, having a few uh, announcements uh, in, the, in the Parker driver to, uh, to better handle attribute and spatial filtering. And we also added a right side to uh, this Euro API with a right Euro batch method where you can uh, um, uh, group together a number of features that you want to write in an efficient way. So we have. Uh, generic implementation that works with all OGR drivers that have a right side, and we have a specialized uh, implementation for Euro and uh, Parquet drivers, which have obviously a natural way of uh, implementing uh, that new API. 
OGR to OGR has been uh, enhanced to, uh, to support using this read and write sides of a row. And so, for example, now uh, if you do a geo package to parquet uh, format uh, translation, it's uh, three times faster, and parquet to parquet is uh, 10 times faster, roughly. Um, there have been enhancements in the GeoParquet driver uh, with uh, the support uh, for reading quite complex uh, data structure with nested lists and maps, and those are mapped uh, uh, to the adjacent uh, serialized string uh, to be more friendly with uh, other drivers. We have full spatial uh, filtering uh, and not just a bounding box intersection. And we also have implemented uh, the features of the new uh, GeoParquet 1.1 specification. So when we write uh, geometry, we also write uh, its bounding box, uh, which helps uh, to have a faster, faster um, filtering uh, on the read side. And on the right side, uh, we uh, support uh, sorting features especially, which uh, helps uh, to uh, group uh, together uh, nearby features and uh, having a more efficient use of parquet statistics to, uh, to be able to read them efficiently. And we have also support for uh, the GeoRero encoding, which is uh, an alternate encoding to WKB, uh, and uh, which uses, uh, uses a more natural uh, data structure. Uh, for example, uh, lines are represented as a list of X, Y pairs, and uh, it helps for uh, faster and better compression. Uh, we have um, support for uh, uh, geometry coordinate precision uh, framework. So it's uh, a way to uh, specify that uh, typically for text-based formats, you have a number of uh, decimals uh, that are significant. And uh, so now you can specify that in a unified way and for drivers that uh, uh, support storing uh, that uh, coordinate precision, it's also stored as metadata. So if you do format translation, uh, in the good case, uh, the coordinate pre uh, precision will be uh, preserved, uh, which uh, makes files smaller and avoids putting uh, insignificant information. Um, we have technical enhancements uh, to uh, the GDAL uh, driver um, plugin support. So that's something that um, has always existed, the ability to build a GDAL driver as a, a separate uh, shared library uh, that is loaded uh, at runtime. So previously, all plugins were loaded at uh, in instantiation time of GDAL, which could be some tens or hundreds of milliseconds. And uh, now we have uh, an improvement where drivers uh, are only loaded uh, when, uh, when needed. Uh, various different uh, small or not some <laughs> small topics, but uh, we have a new driver for the vector mirrorment format. So it's uh, a format that is uh, developed mostly in, uh, in Catalonia. We have the TileDB driver, which has been uh, uh, enhanced with support for multidimensional API. We have a uh, performance improvement in uh, geo package creation. So typically the spatial index creation used to be a very slow steps and uh, now it's three to four times faster. We have a line of sight uh, algorithm. So it's to compute the visibility between two points taking into account the digital elevation model. And uh, yeah, we have a number of technical uh, uh, updates and uh, the uh, components we use uh, in, uh, in GDAL. Uh, GDAL Adu has uh, also uh, new enhancements to be able to uh, uh, partially refresh overviews. So if you sometimes you have an update in a virtual mosaic and you want to really refresh just a part of uh, your overviews, you, you can do that uh, easily and efficiently now. Uh, and a uh, small preview on the, of the next version. So we will have a uh, filter push down uh, support for multi-file data sets in uh, GeoParquet. Uh, the TileDB driver will be enhanced with uh, no data and uh, overview support. The GDAL view shade uh, uh, utility uh, will be multi-threaded, so it, it will be faster. 
we have support for 64 bits object identifiers in uh, the OpenFile GDB driver and not in the proprietary one because uh, S3 didn't provide support for their own format. <laughs> uh, we have a, we'll have a new uh, driver for the OpenDrive format and there will be a talk in uh, later, maybe, I don't, I don't remember, but in this conference uh, about it. And we will probably have support also for 16-bit uh, floating bot uh, data type, uh, especially for the uh, ZAR format. And so to conclude, uh, I would like to, uh, to thank all the sponsors uh, who make it possible to have uh, daily uh, bug fixes and uh, timely review of uh, pull requests and monitoring of uh, security uh, issues. So if your organization critically depends on GDAL, you can also join as a, as a sponsor. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Eve, for your uh, great presentation with all the nice new uh, features in GDAL and a preview of what's coming up. Um, the floor is now for, uh, for you in the audience to, to ask questions. Uh, we'll have a microphone that is uh, going around. So, who has a question? There's a question in the back. Uh, thank you, even for this talk. Um, very interesting. I, I was uh, very interested in the, um, the the tile serving the the, the GDLT index with with multiple or many files. Uh, does it support also different projections? Because you were talking about on the fly uh, reprojections. So can all those small uh, multiple files be in different projections? Yes. Um, so. In the tile index, all the footprints will be, will be reprojected into uh, a single uh, CRS because uh, you need that to, to be able to find them. You need a unified CRS. And this will be also the one that is used for the virtual mosaic. But if the uh, tile itself is uh, in other CRS, uh, it, it will basically use the GDAL warp under the, underneath to uh, reproject uh, the tiles into the uh, GTI uh, CRS, yeah. And that will that reprojection will be done at read time when you when you read the, the VRT. Uh, not when you when when you actually need to open that tile and yeah. extract information from it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it works. Obviously, it will not be the fastest way because I mean on the fly reprojection still takes time. But uh, yeah, that that works. That, that will give you the same result as if you had materialized the reprojection of the tile uh, to the target CRS. Okay, thank you. We have time for uh, another question. Anyone? No, then I have a quick question. So uh, you presented uh, the organizations that are now uh, supporting uh, GDAL development. Um, is this going well? Because in the past uh, there were some, uh, some challenges you had. Uh, can, can you comment a bit on the sustainability now? Uh, yeah, it, it's always uh, a, a bit challenging because uh, yes, sometimes um, you know, organizations change policies or you know, sometimes they lay out employees so the situation is not so good to ask for money to them. Um, and so we rely um, sometimes just on uh, one or two people in this organization and they have to navigate through their hierarchy to, uh, to make a case for sponsoring a free and open source software. So it's not easy, uh, definitely, and it requires effort to really <laughs> make sure they, they go on with their uh, sponsoring. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Eve. Uh, an applause for Eve and support his work.